This season has proven that the WNBA was never ready for this level of spotlight and attention. We're not allowed anymore to show the number one draft pick in the WNBA draft as opposed to Angel Reese. Skip Bayless was apparently hesitant to praise Caitlin Clark. Caitlin has been dominating the WNBA, drawing big crowds and boosting ratings despite facing criticism and even physical confrontations on the court from activist black women. The WNBA was not ready for this kind of spotlight. From commissioner to owners to GMs to coaches to some players, not all, some players have been doing fantastic this season and handling themselves with such grace to some fans to some referees the WNBA was not ready the media was not ready for this it was an overnight success with the WNBA and with that there has been such a spotlight on the WNBA something that these players these coaches the media have wanted for so many years but were not prepared for the moment for example Diamond De Shields hit her hard and Angel Reese had a rough tackle on her it was as if they were channeling old school wrestling moves yet Caitlyn has stayed professional keeping her comments to herself despite the harsh criticism from the media the internet Internet trolls are one thing. When it goes beyond that, that is something that needs to be addressed. I think it not only should be addressed publicly when asked about it, but the players should know that they feel safe. The players should know if there is a fan in person in the arena who says something racist towards me, hateful towards me, threatens me, that they are immediately kicked and banned from the arena. Skip Bayless seems to be worried about being labeled a red state white guy by praising her. And I started watching the WNBA much more closely than I ever had. And I started to think deep down in my psyche, wait a second, but I'll be the first to admit, I felt guilty saying so on TV or on social media. I did not want to look like this red state white guy cheering for this red state white girl. Our country feels split enough racially already. I, I didn't want to pour gasoline on that fire. If you're wondering where you can find Skip Bayless now, his show is on YouTube. It seems he's reluctant to support Caitlin Clark publicly due to fear of this label. Maybe I was wrong about this, but Caitlin Clark started to feel like, to me, some sort of new right-wing symbol. White woman dominating the game, dominated by black men and women for years and years. I could almost hear some people thinking, white power, baby. And please, I'm not saying Caitlin Clark is far right in her politics or beliefs. I have no idea what her politics or religion are. He recently shared his thoughts on Caitlin Clark. He mentioned that when Caitlin Clark emerged from Iowa, he found himself watching the WNBA more closely than before. He acknowledged that he thought Clark was incredibly talented, but felt uneasy about praising her publicly. Because she has carefully, and I say smartly, avoided taking any rookie year stands because she's already such a lightning rod. He didn't want to appear as though he was just another white guy supporting a white athlete, especially given the racial divides in the country. But obviously, I know what, what a powerful point of pride basketball has been to the black community in this country. Black men and women obviously have been routinely and consistently better at basketball than white players, white people. Bayless admitted he worried that Clark might be seen as a symbol of white dominance in a sport traditionally led by black players. I told myself it's not racist for me to like Caitlin Clark's game and to say so publicly. And I have no doubt some of the early resentment among black stars in the WNBA was caused from them reading their social media mentions, their comments, and deciding that Caitlin Clark had become the darling of the far right. However, he clarified that he didn't believe Caitlin Clark held any far-right views or was deliberately promoting any political agenda. We're not allowed anymore to show the number one draft pick in the WNBA draft as opposed to Angel Reese, a woman who can't run. I mean, next time you watch Angel Reese play, yes, she can play. She's a good player, but she can't run. But we're not allowed to show the number one pick in the draft, the most dynamic player, including everybody. Why? Well, because it's racist. Bayless pointed out that Clark, unlike Larry Bird, who became the great white hope in the NBA has an exceptional skill set that stands out on its own. Skip Bayless felt guilty. He mentioned that despite initially promoting Angel Reese as Rookie of the Year, he realized that it's not racist to publicly appreciate Clark's talent. Let me ask you, why are all you white people trying so damn hard to be something you're not? Bayless emphasized that his admiration for Clark's game isn't influenced by race, but purely by her remarkable skill. He wanted to make it clear that his praise for her is based on her talent and not any racial or political bias. Skip Bayless says, I felt guilty about, well, 
praising Caitlin Clark. I'm not going to give someone credit just because of their skin color. So you think you're going to look like a red state white guy by rooting for a little girl basketball player in a league that people are just starting to notice. The world is weird. Uh, white dudes, get your heads out of your asses. I mean, damn. Seriously, are you kidding? If you haven't been keeping up with the WNBA, you might not know that Caitlin Clark is like a mix of Larry Bird and Steph Curry. The brothers are just laughing at you. I got a lot of African-American friends, and they're just laughing at white guys. He goes, man, y'all try so hard. I go, isn't it cute? They're going, no, it's really pathetic. I go, I know. She has the skills of those legends and the star power of Michael Jordan. Honestly, she's the most talked about player in sports right now. Caitlin Clark is a superstar. Not a female superstar. She is a superstar. She moves the needle. The WNBA has been looking for someone who moves the needle. No joke. When a WNBA game gets over a million viewers, something that hasn't happened in 23 years, that's a huge deal. The ratings just came in. Caitlin Clark's game on Sunday did a bigger number than Warrior Celtics. Did three and a half million. Warrior Celtics did three million. Now let's talk about Angel Reese. It's surprising that some media outlets even brought her up. This season, she was never really in the running for WNBA Rookie of the Year. And one thing Caitlin Clark does maybe better than anybody in sports right now makes it about others, makes it about team. But this is expected of Caitlin Clark. She's supposed to be great. She's not the Rookie of the Year. Angel Reese is because that's a surprise, which to me is wrong because Angel Reese was the best player on the team that won a national championship in college. Sure, she might have been a contender at the start, but that didn't last long. I looked into it, and Caitlin Clark has shattered over 60 records this year, both rookie records and WNBA records that even legends like Brittany Griner, Asia Wilson, and Diana Taurasi couldn't reach. Some of those records were just out of their grasp. Plus, she's achieved two triple doubles as a rookie, which has never happened in the league before. And let's not forget about Skip Bayless's weak comments. He didn't want to look like a white guy because Caitlin Clark started to feel like some sort of new right wing symbol before going on to say black men and women obviously have been routinely and consistently better at basketball not when I was coming up in Gary Indiana yo this is what happens when someone tries to cater to race baiters you know the way that Caitlin Clark became polarizing was because of the way the WNBA players acted like such jackasses. Angel Reese celebrating uh, Kennedy Carter, whatever the hell her name is, knocking her on the ground. The coach, Cheryl Reeves, being dumb enough to put up It's Not Jump Out One Woman. That is divisive. That is hateful. And people reacted to it. It wasn't about whether a white girl came in and dominated a black sport. Hell, there is no sport. Apparently, I'm in hot water for recognizing talent without focusing on skin color just because that person is white. So am I in the wrong here? If you're upset, I understand. It's my fault, not yours. Honestly, I don't care about skin color. Caitlin Clark is white, and there's no reason to apologize for that. The WNBA is no sport until this year with Caitlin Clark. It's just a collection of people playing basketball, which I guess is a sport, but it's no league, I guess. This is part of what's wrong with the media today. It's ridiculous that a sports commentator feels guilty for praising an athlete who shines in their sport. What's the point of being in this business? So just stop with all that. She didn't become a function of any side. People reacted to the stupidity, the jealousy of the players, whether it was Charles Barkley or Jimmy, Joey Bag of Donuts on the street or Susie Rottencrotch hanging out watching at home. We reacted to the stupidity, the pettiness, the jealousy. No one is actually paying attention to him. Honestly, Skip Bayless could be the face of everything that's wrong in America. It's just sad. My wife called it before anybody. She said this is simple, very simple. The WNBA women, and this is before the season, can't stand other women being successful. So they will be jackasses. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. What's wild is that there was a time when Skip Bayless was seen as the most fearless guy in sports media. That's why people liked him. He wasn't afraid to say things like, hey, something seems off about Troy Aikman. Does anyone remember that? Well, nobody, nobody likes, nobody dislikes her. And then Asia Wilson going off on an idiotic rant because I think Asia Wilson's really dumb. I do. And if that makes me a bad person, I can only react to what she's shown. 
I'm sure she's a lovely lady, a terrific basketball player, but when I see her talk about Caitlin Clark, I think she's really dumb. He was ready to call out people that others in the media wouldn't touch, and now he's become exactly what he used to despise. I think Kennedy Carter, really dumb. Charles Barkley said it the other day, you could not have effed this up more. And that's what people react to. Nobody gives a damn about uh, Caitlin Clark's politics, except for maybe some little girl in Iowa wearing a 22 shirt. If- Seriously, it's pretty pathetic. Skip Bayless recently shared his thoughts on why he hesitated to openly support Caitlin Clark, the rising star of women's basketball, during a podcast episode. Caitlin Clark, she doesn't take the bait of anybody. She's smarter than everybody. He expressed admiration for Clark's skills, which inspired him to start following the WNBA this season. However, he admitted that he initially held back from joining in the excitement surrounding her due to feelings of guilt and a desire to avoid contributing to racial tensions. The women of the WNBA and their fans just need to shut the hell up. Let me stay with this for a second. I said this yesterday, and I'm going to say it again. These women caused every problem that they perceived to have. They have. They have caused every single problem. Bayless explained, I began to realize deep down that she's really talented, but I felt guilty about saying it on TV or social media. I didn't want to come across as just another white guy from a red state cheering for a white girl from a red state. Our country is already divided enough racially, and I didn't want to add to that. These players have been pains in the ass. These players have been oft times violent. We've seen Caitlin Clark shoved from behind, knocked from the side, hit in the head. These players have been racist to the point where the word white bitch was said more to Caitlin Clark than hey, Caitlin. To the point where Indiana Fever general manager Lynn Dunn had to address this with video and audio and get it to the league office to get it to stop because these players were such jealous, petty dumbasses. Earlier this year, Bayless had been critical of Clark, even questioning her potential on FS1. He remarked, Caitlin, I'm not sure if she has that drive. While he acknowledged her talent and shooting ability, he expressed doubts about her competitive spirit. And now the we saw Angel Reese, who has made herself into whatever the hell she thinks she is, celebrate when the little white girl got knocked on her ass by some girl acting like a dude, Kennedy Carter. We've seen Angel Reese and her team lie about being accosted by the media on their way off the bus into a hotel when it was one guy asking one question about one incident. He also noted that part of his reluctance to support Clark stemmed from the perception that she had become a right-wing symbol because of her success in a sport traditionally dominated by black athletes. We've seen the dumbest of the dumb here in the WNBA in terms of athletes. We've seen women that are absolutely not ready to jump onto the national stage. But is it their fault? Oh, hell no. It's never their fault. You know whose fault it is now? The commissioner. The commissioner of the league is at fault because the commissioner of the league didn't, quote, protect the players when asked about the comments online, sexist, racist, whatever. She talked about rivalries and the growth of the league. What she should have said is our players have been dumbasses. Our players started this type hate. Our players were jealous, petty. Our coach, Cheryl Reeves, was envious and defensive to the point where she actually put out in her tweets not about only one woman or something like that. That's divisive. Bayless clarified that he wasn't implying Clark held any far-right beliefs. Rather, he was concerned about how his support might be interpreted in a politically charged environment. That's what these dumbasses are doing. And in true Sarah Spain and other dipshit women journalist fashion, it can't be the women's fault. Oh, hell no. How could it be the women's fault? Because they're perpetual victim. Isn't that what we do? Isn't that how we try to portray this? It isn't the women's fault. Certainly can't be Angel Reese's fault that she acted like a complete dumbass in celebrating Caitlin Clark getting knocked on her ass. Can't be that fault. Can't be the Olympic coach's fault for sitting there like an OG glob of shit with a, and, and talking about how Caitlin Clark didn't deserve to be on the Olympic team and putting out a hashtag saying, uh, not about one woman. 
In the midst of his reflections, Bayless's career has faced challenges, especially after leaving FS1, where his ratings had dropped significantly. Yes, it's racist, according to the idiots. When will the madness end? I think it's on its way to ending. I do. I think that Netflix special last night showed that black folks can get on white folks, white folks on black folks, and everybody can laugh about it. And truthfully, if all the little D-bags like Seth Davis or Dan Wolken or Greg Doyle, the little white liberal peens in the ass put don't like it, screw them. Critics have suggested that his recent admissions might be an attempt to regain relevance in a changing media landscape. Some view his comments as genuine, while others see them as a calculated move to stay in the spotlight. Women hate to see other women's success. They hate to see it. The jealousy, as Charles Barkley said, the pettiness. Yep. She told me before, she said, you will see incredible pettiness, jealousy. There's no understanding that Caitlin Clark is helping everybody. Right. There's jealousy about the shoe contract, jealousy about the basketball, the first round pick. There's a little bit of racism or sexism in there. She's a sing, you know, straight white girl. Okay. But that ain't it to me. Skip voiced some worries saying I might be off track here, but Caitlin Clark seems to be emerging as a new figure for the right. Some might see her as a white woman excelling in a sport that's usually dominated by black athletes. Wow. Women don't want to see other women be successful in sports. That's just, and that's, we're seeing a lot of that from a lot of different teams, a lot of different people, including analysts. I can almost hear some people thinking white power. Let me be clear. I'm not suggesting Caitlin Clark has any far right beliefs or anything like that. Honestly, I have no idea about her political or religious views since she's managed to stay neutral during her rookie season, especially given how much attention she's getting. He added, I completely understand the significance of basketball within the black community in this country. It's evident that black athletes have traditionally shined in this sport. Recently, during a press conference, Clark was asked about her political stance after she liked a post from Taylor Swift, endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris for the upcoming election. While she didn't endorse anyone or mention specific candidates, she stressed her desire to use her platform to encourage people to vote. Caitlin Clark is from Des Moines, Iowa, where she played college basketball before going pro and being drafted by the Fever. She's the middle child in her family with two brothers, Blake and Colin, and her parents, Ann and Brent, have strong ties to Iowa. Since her junior year at Iowa, when she led the Hawkeyes to the national championship game against against Angel Reese and LSU, there has been a lot of talk about how her race impacts her popularity. These discussions grew even more during her first WNBA season, particularly when she played against Reese's team, the Chicago Sky. Early in her rookie year, Clark faced some rough fouls from opponents, but a particularly contentious foul by Chenity Carter from the Sky in March led to significant backlash from her passionate fans. In the first episode of her podcast last week, Reese mentioned that she believes many of Clark's fans have racist attitudes. She said, I think it's mainly the fans, Clark's fans, Iowa fans, and now Indiana fans who are very loyal, which I respect. But sometimes their behavior can be quite disrespectful. There seems to be a lot of racism involved. Bayless isn't the only controversial sports commentator who has touched on Clark's race in relation to her WNBA reputation. For example, in June, ESPN host Pat McAfee had to apologize on social media after calling Clark a white bee. During a live broadcast, even in his apology, McAfee stood by his view that Clark's race influences how she's perceived in the WNBA and how she's treated by other players. McAfee initially said, is there a chance people just like watching her because she's so electrifying and stands for something? Maybe. But instead, we hear that we only like her because she's white and that she's popular only because other rookies are performing differently. That's nonsense. The WNBA, especially their refs, should stop trying to undermine her at every turn. She's a special player, and we're fortunate to have her in Indiana. Jim Trotter, a columnist for The Athletic and The New York Times, has written several articles addressing Clark's race. He criticizes both her fans and Clark for not strongly confronting the prejudices some of her fans hold. What do you think about this? It's unbelievable. She's an amazing basketball player. Objectively, she's the second best in the league right now as a rookie. She's even in the MVP talks and totally crushed the Rookie of the Year award. What are your thoughts? Alright, I'm out. Until next time, Thanks for tuning in.